Hello, Carrots here. Welcome to my tutorial on putting a staircase into a basement. We're using a sloping lot and I'm starting the basement from the lowest point on the lot. This means the only staircase we can use will be a straight staircase. The lot is on Moonfall Island, which is a player made world by Reflong 7. And the sim I've got to assist me today is Faith Flower. She's a fairy. And when I've finished building the basement and the tutorial is complete, I will allow her to keep the lot because she's one of the sims that I want to live on Moonfall Island. The lot I've chosen is defaulting as a community lot, but I've decided that I want it to be a residential lot. Unfortunately, it's the wrong sort of residential lot. I can't add a sim to it, so I've got to go and add something to it. Now, since it's partially underwater and I've got some starfish, I'm going to put a little starfish on it. Let's see, the reason why I couldn't put a staircase from the lowest point of the lot, in this instance, the lowest point of the lot is actually under the ocean. We couldn't have a spiral staircase going up into the ocean. So now we've got a starfish and the icon has changed to a little house so we can actually add a sim to it from the library. I'll have to activate the lot. Now this lot is right next door to my mermaids. I previously made a mermaid house with a similar basement with a longer staircase. Didn't do a very good job of recording the tutorial so I thought I'd do one especially and put another lot next door to them. So she's going down there to check on her starfish, which is right next to the edge of the water. I'll let her go and play in the water for a while. Although why she would choose to wear high heels into the water, I don't know. But she did. Once she got in there, then she changed into a swimmers. Now we can get busy and we can... She's actually waded off the lot now. She's not on the lot anymore. But I don't think it matters if she's on the lot or not. Use the basement tool and try to find the lowest point on the lot. Now if you don't find the lowest point and you want to extend your basement out so that the entire lot is covered, you'll need to make sure you start again from inside the basement you've already done. Because if you start on a new location, you'll end up with a basement with multiple levels on it and it won't be very easy to work with. It might be what you would like to have happen in the end, but it's not I don't want it to be like that. I want my basement to be the same flat level all the way across. Now we're in it too far. We've got two more tiles available to us on this side. And I think we've got an extra tile available at the back. So provided you start drawing the basement from inside the already drawn basement area, you will get it at all the same level all the way. Now we're going to take it back one more square as well. So I start from inside the existing basement and go all the way across to where you come to the edge. Of course you've got to leave an empty square all the way around. You can't go to the absolute edge. Now we've got a nice flat basement. We'll keep it flat by adding a wooden floor. One of the free wooden floor tiles. We'll just cover the entire basement with that because when you place your stairs they might dig a hole in the floor just at the foot of the stairs and you'll have troubles getting your sim to be able to use the steps. So now we've got the wooden floor covering the entire area. Now they've got the letterbox. If you're going to leave the letterbox where it is it's handy to know where it is when you're downstairs. So I just use my wooden floor tile from the corner and I count the squares across to the letterbox. So it's 20 squares to the letterbox from the edge of the lot so it'll be 19 squares from the edge of the basement to where the letterbox is. So we count across with a different coloured floor tile so that we know that that is where the position of the letterbox is. Now go back up the top again. Now I could use the floor tiles to count the lot, the squares towards from the letterbox, but that would actually change the levels. And I don't want to risk doing that, so I'll use terrain paint. It'll give me an idea, it won't give me the exact answer, but it will give me an idea. So I've decided to come in six, That's a, it's approximately about six tiles, six or seven tiles from the letterbox. It can be a bit of trial and error, it's entirely 
up to you. You don't have to accept the first staircase you've placed if you don't want to. Now when I'm doing long staircases, I always like to make them at least two stairs wide. That means I can have multiple sims using them at the same time. It can take a while for the sims to get up or down a staircase. And I've had as many as six sims on the staircase at any one time. Because if, it's, if the slot is a very steep slope, your staircase is going to be a very long staircase. So then we've got our staircase in position. Now the next critical thing, which if you make this mess this up here, you will have an unusable staircase. There's two squares, or if it's only two squares because I've got a two tile wide staircase, the tiles at the top of the staircase are the only ones that are at the correct level. So you must always, for all the levelling you do from here on in, it's got to be from those two squares. Now that's so I can have a doorway, and you need the doorway's got to have the levelling on both sides of it. I'll just put a wall across there to put the door in it. I'll put a two tile wide door. Any door will do. It doesn't have to be suitable for the sort of house. So there we go. We've got a two tile wide door and it fits first go because we've got two flat tiles on each side of the doorway. And there's a gap of two tiles between the door and the top of the stairs. The stairs need a two tile gap there and the doorway needs two tiles on each side of it. They've all got to be measured. The flattening has got to happen from the those two tiles at the top of the steps. Of course, if your staircase was four tiles wide, you'd be working with four tiles at the top of the steps. They'd all be the same level because your steps would have leveled them when you placed them. They may be higher or lower than the surrounding terrain. In this case, they're lower, but it just depends on how far up they have to reach to get to the terrain above. The steps work it out for you. It's entirely different when you're using a spiral staircase and I will do a spiral staircase in another tutorial. Now I'm just going to do a little tiny house here, just something that is suitable for an entryway only to the because her living area is going to be down below. I don't want her to spoil the look of her sea or beachside lot. So I'm going to give her two tiles on each side of the stairs. And I use a different colour of the timber flooring just to show you what's going on. Now I've taken it beyond the hole for the stairs for a specific reason. I want to actually show you something. When you do these really long staircases, there are two tiles, or the, the tiles for the width of the staircase are unusable for the length of the staircase. Now this is where you need the CFE cheat, the constra constraint floor elevation, because those two tiles are actually poking up, it's not level. You need to have a level flat surface for to place a wall. So you do control shift C to get your cheat box up, and then you type in constraint floor elevation false. And then you use your terrain tool and you go off the level of those two front tiles and it's drop that down flat now and so now you can draw your wall across the back of the staircase. Now my final house is just going to have the wall but you see even though it's flat you still can't put floor tiles there. So that wall is now complete but I will demonstrate to you what you can do with the, this back area. So you see you got that whole area there which you can't put floor tiles on, which could be interesting if you are, you know, if you've got this inside a house. You can actually use move objects on to put other objects there. I mean that there is a challenge for you to solve creatively depending on what you want to do with it. It's not a something that says well you can't use this sort of stairs because it won't let you place anything above them. You can place things there but you've got to use move objects on and not only can you place objects there but your sim can walk around there. That is usable it's just that I haven't got floor tiles there. You can even put a little wall around it but I got rid of it I don't want those tiles at the back either. I just don't want to use that area. So for me, a problem doesn't exist. But I just thought I would show it to you so you'd be aware and wouldn't get a surprise 
if you wanted to include all of that in your building. So I've ended up with a square. The steps I've taken up four and I've got two spaces in front. So it's a six by six building. And I'm just putting some of my final choice for the floor tiles. Get rid of that floor that's measuring across to the letterbox as well. Don't need that anymore. Paint it. Add a couple little porthole windows to the front. Other windows and the sides just because I can. You do what you like. I'm not really showing you how to build a little beach shack. I'm just showing you how to place the stairs. I do like to put a timber flooring on top of my ceilings so that I can paint the ceiling later on if I choose to. It helps when I'm doing videos if I've ever got the camera pointed upwards. It helps to have a little ceiling and I'm going to give it a pagoda roof. A thatched pagoda roof actually. This is where it was important to have a square building. Six by six. And I know my pagoda is going to fit properly. So that's pretty much it for what I want to show you. But I'm just going to decorate the back of it a little bit by using move objects on. See that you can't put even put plants there, but you can do it if you've got move objects on. And don't forget to turn your constrained floor elevation off as well. You need to go constrained floor elevation true. Otherwise you'll have sims sinking into the ground all over your world. You also need to make sure you turn off move objects sheet because if you accidentally place things the sim might be going to use with the move objects sheet turned on you can have massive problems with the sim not being able to get around the objects that you've placed especially if they're objects that the sim is going to be using. Put a couple of lights in and once she can see where she's going I'll get her to come and test the steps. I'll let her keep this place. I'll build her a basic area to live in. I'll give her a kitchen and a bedroom and bathroom and a few little things like that but I won't do that while you're watching. That'll be just something because I wanted to add this sim to my world anyway so she might as well live here next to the mermaids. I might even add some mermaids to her household later on. To get rid of that flooring easily that at the front there under the letterbox all you need to do is hold your control key down and click onto that flooring well, while you've got a floor tile selected and it'll just all go in a big hurry. It'll just vanish completely straight away. Come on, get out of the water and come up here and test our steps. It's a very grey day out there. I'd like a nice blue ocean. This is a beautiful little world. It's only a medium sized world and it's a bit like Moonlit Falls if you're used to Moonlit Falls but it's smaller and it's different. So she's gone down those steps so no problems. Let's see if she can go up again. That's it, she got up the top. Let's see if she can walk around in her garden where the staircase won't let us place, place floor tiles. Let's see if she can walk around there. Yes, no trouble, she can walk there. So that's it, the end of the video. Thank you for watching, hope you've learned something that was useful to you. If you liked it please give it a like and if you want to see more videos of mine maybe you could even consider subscribing. And thank you to those who have already subscribed because your support is greatly appreciated. Thank you. That's it for now. Happy simming and bye bye for now.